From an expansion standpoint, um, we knew we wanted to do like a domestic, international, like twice a year thing, one and one. We had actually began the process of finding venues in this whole other country. Being a spiritual man, Papa Lowe decided, he informed us, he said, no, I believe, he says, no, we, we need to do London. I was like, oh. Literally, the birth of the church was in Europe. Apostle Paul and them were traveling to Europe to preach. Falsehood is spreading because people are looking for answers and the church has been lukewarm. Revival and an awakening has to happen in Europe for people to truly run back to the Lord. In London, <laughs> London. <laughs> All the work that goes into taking these nights anywhere, whether we're going down the street or across the world, we take a team just to look into the possibilities that that land can hold. So when we even went to London just to scout that venue and every place that we've gone, we've done the same. It's a process of being able to step foot on that land, knowing that God has given it to us in possession, but also to see what is going to accommodate the work that God has given us to do. If they want to do a rehearsal day. When we go and we scout these venues, there's a whole team here on ground that has done months of preliminary research just to accommodate this small team to be able to scout X, Y, and Z venue. So when we went, there were a few that just were not interested at all in having a church event there. There were some that were interested but unavailable. So we saw a few venues and what it came down to was, what is God leading us towards? Our sort of jurisdiction is around the, the gate. It's, you see the sort of fence that goes around the park. And the entrance is where you came in on the, on the gate up there. We looked at several places and then when we found the evolution, because we already knew what we we're going to look at, we scheduled it. When we got there, we just knew this is the place. It's going to look amazing. It's going to be able to cater to people. It's in a park. It's a venue in a park. So it means it will be mainly us. It will be a lot of other things going on. So it's easier to navigate, to control and and, it's, and, and this is the part that is even more beautiful. Everyone that was there was there in the house. It's people that, that were there when, when the call began. The first apostles were there. So it's a, it's a phenomenal thing to see. God is gracious. We saw you and we're like, that's probably not you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, God bless how you. Are you well, God. I'm doing well, I'm doing well. How are oh, you? How are you all doing? Good to see you in London. Yeah, yeah. we're doing a meeting here uh, at the, what is it, Evolution? Evolution but, London. Uh, okay. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be really it's good. It's really, really wow. good yeah. to see good you. Good to see you. People want God and people want solutions. Whenever the presence of God is in a place, that is where the healing, the deliverance, and transformation is. It's something about being able to recognize and be sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit to say, this is it. So that's what happened. We're gonna be at Evolution London on October 27th, but know that 
what came before you ever stepping into that room will be the answer that God has been waiting to release to each person that's coming. So whether you're coming from France, whether you're coming from Germany or Spain or any of the surrounding countries in Europe that are easily accessed via London, we thank God for you now. And we thank God for the work that is being done in you even now with just your commitment to come to this service, with just your commitment to say, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. Or Lord, I'm so hungry and desperate for you. I have to be there. We thank God for you even now. Do I even have one of those? Party? Oh, guys, welcome. Welcome to my office. This is... This is this is uh, Madam Director of Ministries. This is this is our, our digital branding uh, correspondent extraordinaire. Huh? What did I break? You broke the floor. Yeah. This is this is this is Uju, Master of all things. This is the Apostle Apostle Gershon, the Associate Pastor. Wow. Apostle I'm honored to stand next to the chairman. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. You preached the house down last night. What can we do? What can we do? Only differences in all the other places we've been to. Because it's here in the States, you kind of still feel like a sense of, you know, confidence in just how you can maneuver and things like that. London feels more like, okay, like, let's... Make sure we do it right. Let's make sure we we don't mess up. And 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 the team has done a great job from our events team to our HR to to just all of our all of our leaders to just to prep the team ready for how how the laws are different. What what our code of conduct as a traveling team is going to be, and what London seems to be for us is it's a bold statement. It really is. It really is a bold statement. Um, not that churches can't travel, but I think the thing that humbles me is because we just started having Sunday service in 2021, how what was Lovie's house, the one night a week, you know, is now a one night a week in your city, town, country. That's baffling. And, and so from an expense standpoint, Dallas was a couple hundred thousand. Miami was closer to the 300,000. Houston was like closer to the 400,000, like the 390,000. And then now we have London. And London where we've already surpassed uh, Houston. So we're estimating, um, I would say maybe about 520. That's where it's sitting right now. JT Boyd is a very quintessential part of our ministry. He not only has the skill set, he has the determination, the endurance, the patience, and the intellectual ability to be able to look at numbers like I've never seen, to manage and be able to prioritize what is the importance of what we are doing and how do we make that happen in the sense of our finances. He is our CFO, our Chief Financial Officer, and he is part of our board. One thing about JT is that he's always been a ones and zeros person. He ran a very successful business. So he's already here, he's somebody that understands how to run an organization, right? So when the time came and he had to let go of his business and sell it, he asked me, I said, of course do it. But his ability to follow through and to know every moving piece is what put him in that position. I said, no, nah, JT is the best person to do that. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. I thought it was appropriate. Um, pretty much, we want to start. I want to start. We're going to get debrief on a little bit prophetic school. And then I want us to talk about as much as we can quickly just some uh, plans for London, as in promo videos. We need like two more promo videos. 
I think um, when I was talking to Dylan, we were thinking one, um, another one of maybe all the past Revelation Nights kind of compilation hype um, promo video, and then a another pow, pow, pow video? a pow pow exactly That's a pow a pow pow video. Oh my gosh, I love that. We should totally describe one of that. A pow pow video yeah, pow. next, and then after a pow pow video, an, uh, our our more staple like narrative, maybe cinematic Revelation Nights video. So I don't know if Chandler, Jeremy, we might want to start thinking about ideas of a cinematic London video. Can we finally shoot the one I wanted to in that plane set? Yeah, maybe we can. That would be pretty dope. That'd be, actually. Pretty dope. That'd be dope. Let's, let's get, uh, it could be like a person getting ready to go with their yeah, passport and then sure. going to the airport and then on the plane and then yeah. just it could end with like going into the window and then it's just the sky and then it's just if, um, Revelation Nights London. If oh, we, the heavens give us ideas. Yeah, let's do it. If we um, can like put together a plan and a budget, I'll put it, pitch it and like, you know, make it happen. Because that one will be our October premiere one. And then this next one coming up will be our September premiere one. Sparks. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Oh, Whoever's watching this, time. we say hello. I'll pray. Okay, thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everybody who came here today on time and late. Father, we love all of them equally. Um, thank you for giving us profound ideas, Lord, that um, are only from you so that we can elevate this house, elevate our prophet, elevate our prophetess, and just take the whole media to extra, extra deep dimensions, Lord. Um, we give all the glory to you. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, to be honest with you, Esther's the best. She's great at what she does, and what I love is because she's driven. For you to be a producer, you have to always want the best. You have to always want things to look phenomenal. And me, I'm a perfectionist. So somebody who likes perfection is perfect for me, especially when it comes to like displaying what is being done. And Esther works tirelessly. You know, she was she came to the house. And then she stayed in touch. She went to New York and she kept up with me. And, and when we were moving to the new building, I called, I said, Esther, you need to come back because it's time to work. And she was doing film stuff, but she was also like, you know, hustling, staying afloat. I told her, Esther, you need to come because this is what we need to do now. She flew in and she landed and she landed, came straight to my house, set up cameras and started working immediately. What if like, you know how like the ben, ben, Big Ben clock is, you know, counting forward? What if we were counting backwards and the time Revelation Nights would be the clock ends at 12, 12 or like right on the, right on the, that 12. You know I what I'm saying? That. I love the Big Ben, um, using Big Ben idea. What do you think, Dylan? Okay, you know that edit? I want to do this edit so bad. This is like my dream, my dream edit. I want to go into Papa's watch, do some crazy thing, and come out of the Big Ben watch. The Big Ben clock. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want to do that so bad. I want to do that so bad. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. For, for a five minute timer or like some kind of countdown. Yeah, no, on the LED wall. On the worship, on the worship, on the LED wall. You're like in the clock. Like the LED wall? The worship is in Clock? No, like it's on the LED wall. Like, you're yeah. in the clock, and then it like pulls out, and then it's like Big Ben. Yeah, oh, that that should be the day we air for London. I, yes. That should be the Pop day. The yeah, pop it, yes. bang. Exactly. Right? I'm talking, but I'm talking about meeting up. Pop I'm talking about. I'm talking about leading up to it. Like you know how every because every Friday we, we want to drop, and that's the, like. I don't know how we would scheme it or whatever, but like every hour decreasing until the time we get to London, now Big Ben is at 12, 12, the hour where we really do whatever. It's just it's just a concept that I just thought my favorite, about. My favorite rollout ever on TV is the 25 Days Till Christmas. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, 25 oh, yeah. different movies. Oh, the Freeform Family, ABC yeah. Family. Yeah, you know they do do a great one. Yeah. That's my thought. Like right. that, that was my thought initially when I said the idea was like, how do we have our own version of that's a good idea. You know what I'm saying? 25 so days till London. why don't you guys keep chatting? Right, you know what I'm saying? Like, why don't you guys keep chatting about ideas? Uh, Brandon and I are going to go down and chat with the other creative team. You know, if you guys want to chat a little bit more before the editors come, like who, if they're going to start, we're going to have them start pulling Revelation Night's teaching or are they going to keep on what, what 
um, things that we want them to start editing. And then we'll be back and we can continue chatting about some more London creative and so and start putting it on the schedule and like setting some deadlines. Sound good? Malaysia Nights in London is also like a, a little ode to London. You know, it's, yeah. it's your, your Papa says it's your time, right? Mm -hmm. So always respecting and it's an ode to London. Mm -hmm. We love you, we're coming to bless your city. We want to make sure we're mindful of keeping So we have here on Ground and Events Committee that is solely and completely dedicated to preparing us to have various events, whether in-house or when we travel for Revelation Nights or what have you. That team on events, and it's a, a, a group of people led by Elena, that did a lot of research of finding what venues were central, finding which ones are available, finding which ones are even accepting to having a church event there. After that, you have to think about, oh, when are we going and what time of year will it be and what do they provide as far as accommodations and hotels around. There's so much that goes into planning these nights, what seems like only a few hours has taken over six months and if we had it our way even more than six months to plan properly to make sure that when every single person steps into that room that they have not only stepped into our dedicated and unwavering yes to the Lord but they've stepped into all of the labor that it took just to get us to that See night. I mean, but those are the times that you pop back, you pop, exactly. you pop the later, they, they stand. Yeah, um, exactly. Planning of Revelation Nights uh, over the time, over the course of time has uh, had its own transitions just in terms of uh, the planning and the producing of it, the hands in it and everything. Revelation Nights Dallas was actually planned by Mama Lo. And I think that one, it definitely was a surprise for us just you know, with that being probably the newest thing that we were doing that year. Um, I think for everybody, it was exciting. Um, and then over the course of time from Miami um, with uh, Uju and Sashe being very instrumental in helping plan that as well. Um, and Houston, same, very instrumental with those two planning. I think over the course of time, we've kind of found our rhythm in terms of just like planning and producing and just making sure that all the components came together. And with this being probably the largest undertaking, it's definitely taken some time in terms of like starting, like we started in April and we're kind of finding ourselves at the finish line of just kind of tying a bow on this thing. So it does take quite some time to actually see it from beginning to end, even though like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of taking the reins on a lot of the inner workings of it. You know, it really does take uh, each department to pull together and make it, make it come off, you know, successfully. When we first started Revelation Nights, there wasn't really a gauge that we had of finance, right? Very huge upfront expenses, and then those last minute expenses that we just simply can't avoid. Bringing over a hundred people to these places just to run Revelation Church, just like you would find it in Los Angeles and see me. Partners are important. I'll start on the financial side. Partners help us take the burden off of the operation so that we can keep doing the things here as we should. And it helps give us the necessary support to do what we're going to do in these various places. Though we're a blessed church, we want those who want to partner with the specific work. You shouldn't have to feel that burden if you don't want to partner with the, with the specific work and think that we're asking you to fund that. Oh, we're doing these elaborate things, but we need you. No, no, no. There are people that God has not only specially equipped to partner, but he's called them to partner. Jesus himself had partners. Jesus himself had people that walked with him, committed to the work that he was doing to make what he needed to happen, happen. Prophet Lovi and I stand not only as leaders in this work, but as partners. There is not one thing that this ministry will need if we are still here. Knowing that that which God has entrusted us with, both in responsibility, in resource, in honor to do His work, that we will withhold nothing from making sure that every soul assigned to this ministry will never be able to be untouched.